I am going to do a tough, tough subject today. Hi, Pastor Kathy here, community pastor, Life Point Church, and hello to everyone out at Center Point too in Woodland and surrounding areas. I want to talk about grief. I've actually been fighting this particular little devotion for uh, four or five days. Because when someone passes away in our church family, it affects all of us. And here at Life Point, within a week's time, we had two that just passed away. Went, went on, Lord, and uh, we're not exactly sure why. It's hard to understand. In John eleven thirty five, there are two words that are in there. It's known as the shortest scripture. Jesus wept, period, in a sense. This is during the time with Lazarus, and everybody thought Lazarus had died. And there was a time of grief, and there was a time of just people not understanding why, and that they wanted Jesus to come and heal them, and he didn't go right away, and there's a reason for that. And you can look that up in John 11 and read through there, and you can see. But I know grief. My parents died at a very, very young age of, uh, I think my mom was 54, 53 or 54, and three years later, my dad passed away. I was blessed, as I've told many people before, um, by a family stepping in with a girl that I went to junior or went to high school with my junior year and we became a family and as my children grew up they knew Eileen and Larry as their grandparents and they are my mom and dad but I remember when my mom passed away it was very hard my dad was going through things so I had to help him get a lot of things settled um he he just we were just didn't know what to do. I mean, it's really a crazy process. Um, and we had family come in out of, st out of town and out of state and friends. We had the funeral and uh, my mom was buried a day or two before Valentine's Day. So Valentine's, as the years go by, get harder. But I didn't grieve. I had to be strong. I had to help my dad. My brothers and sister, uh, there was just a lot of grieving going on for them, and so I had to be strong. I was still working full time, and I had three ch two children at that time. Miss Sarah wasn't here yet, and it was just not a time for me to grieve or mourn. And I think some of you can relate to this easily. My dad passed away, like I said, three years later. And we went through that. And, and that was such an ugly, ugly thing. Um, we went through the estate for over three years. It was just a lot of, a lot of issues that should have not happened. It's caused a lot of damage to the families, even to this day. But I reached a point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. There was just other things in life going on. And then handling the estate and just all the emotional baggage I picked up the phone to call my mom. And then that's when I hit, it hit me. I couldn't talk to my mom. My mom wasn't here. And I fell to pieces. And for three days, I was in pieces. I called in work sick. I had a friend come and take my kids to school. And I went from the bed to the couch and back to the bed for three days. But I needed to grieve, and that was my grieving process. We need to let grief happen to each person at their own pace. We can't tell somebody, you know, well, it's been 30 days, it's been six months, it's been a year. That doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make a difference. And those old sweet words of uh, God builds beauty from ashes, He's in a better place, she's in a better place, no longer suffering. Those really don't mean a lot. We smile and thank you, but they really don't mean a lot to us. If you could read my mind, sometimes there weren't even nice thoughts when I was smiling at you. Not you, all of you guys, but at the time, the people I was smiling at. And if you say you need to talk, 
just give me a call. Make sure when you say those words, you really mean it. Because I found lots of people that were too busy. Grief and loss changes us. And grief gives us a deeper level of empathy for what others are walking through. My, my dad, Larry, he's in the hospital right now. He's in rehab, but I can't go in and see him. And a lot of people went through, whether it had family members that had heart attacks or surgeries, um, illnesses for a long time that are not even COVID related, but they could not go into the hospital. They couldn't sit in that dreaded waiting room that we never ever want to sit in for four or five hours. We complain and ache and pain. The food's bad. The chairs are uncomfortable. But right now we're dying to sit in those uncomfortable chairs. It opens our eyes to the pain of this world. I now really understand how much those things sitting in that waiting room, waiting for the doctor to come out, how important they are than sitting in your car in a parking lot or sitting at home waiting for somebody to call you. Are you calling and they're too busy to talk to you and you just have to keep calling back? It puts all of life in perspective and shifts our focus to what actually matters. Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I like to think, blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforting, I-N-G. They will understand where I'm at. So try not to say those things. If you come up to someone that you know is going through something, just stand there or just say, can I give you a hug? I know it's COVID time, but just ask them, can I give you a hug? You know, pat them on the back or something. The best thing to do during those times is just be there and be present. Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus. He knew he was going to go, but he also knew that he needed to go through that grieving process. People need to see that. You know, we talk about God being a magic genie and magician and whatever name you want to put on him sometimes that he will heal because I prayed. And his promises say, but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Just watch what you're doing. Just love on people. And sometimes love is nothing else but sitting in a chair next to the person, being still and not saying anything else. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us all to be more aware of situations around us. Help all of us to not come out with words that have no meaning, but just to be there for people and to actually listen. And sometimes, as I said, just to sit there. We know that just Jesus wept. We also know he wept out other times and cried out for others for the pain that he was feeling, but also the pain he had for others. We can sit beside somebody and cry too. We don't, it's not our job to make them feel better because we can't do that. So just thank you, Lord, for being there, bringing that peace, bringing us the right words to say and not to say at the same time. I ask for peace and love and just some kind of clarity if possible. But even then, I don't know why my parents passed away at such a young age, Lord. And you've never explained it and I've had to accept that. And others will in time too, Lord. Just help us to continue to be there and help families as we need us to be. I thank you, Lord, for all the emotions that we have. And I thank you for all your promises. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.